Hello, it's John Lord here again, and today I'm going to talk about shady, a shady garden, and we're going to talk about, in, in particular, my shady garden. Now, this garden is facing due north. It has a very tall poplar tree that sucks a lot of the water away, but luckily there's a little stream behind, and which sort of helps thing a lot things along. That poplar tree is 20 years old, and. Um, so we are a bit restricted to what we can plant in a situation like that, but still there is lots of plants. The important thing is you always suit the plant to the place. Now just have a look along there. And it's hard to believe this is in its fourth year. It's planted four years ago. And I like the plant by contrast. So we go through some of the plants. We have the bamboo, golden bamboo, Dwarf golden bamboo, phylostasis, uh, not phylostasis, a rundan area, Viridi, Viridi striata it's called. And we've planted it next to a persicaria, which is golden for contrast. And then we've toned it down with a very nice Viburnum retidiophyllum, which is a bit of a mouthful. Now, this Viburnum, particularly like it, it's often inappropriately planted. It is far better in shade and it doesn't like a lot of wind because it damages the leaves a bit but it just it gives a very gentle toning down to the stronger colors we have a very smart uh, dogwood cornus alternifolia variegata which forms layers and it's one of these plants that is better than at some of its parts it's cornus alternifolia variegata and that will also grow in a sunnier spot now we have one of the geranium Wallichianums. They're originally from woodland areas in uh, Asia and they will flower right up until the frost. And look how well they do in the a shady area. It's look at how far up it's grown. The plant has grown right up into the Cotoneaster. We have a few Cotoneasters here. Cotoneaster, I think it's Salicifolia, which means it's the Cotoneaster that has foliage that looks like willow foliage. And be tucked behind here was a plant that I couldn't sell. It was a bit, uh, got a bit damaged in the garden centre, so I just banged it into the back area and forgot about it. And look how well it's come on. It's, that's the great thing about gardening. Plants, sometimes you plant something with great, ho with, with great hopes and it doesn't work out with high hopes. And, it, and then you plant something and you sort of forget about it and that turns out brilliant. This is, look at how, look at the gorgeous leaves. It's a, it's a variety of hydrangea aspera. And, and the, bone, the flowers are good and they're nearly all, almost a bonus, the foliage. Now this is really, really shady and it's doing really well. I think it's called hot chocolate, something with chocolate in the name. And beside it we have a plant I really like and it's a plant that's generally planted in the wrong situations. It's the spotted laurel from Japan and it is far far better in the deepest shade you can get it. The deeper the shade, the bigger the leaf, the thinner the leaf, the less you don't get any of that uh, disfiguring black spots on the leaves either and that is a re it's really really healthy in the shade. It should always be put in the shade and once again you can see the contrast uh, the light yellow with the dark sort of chocolate color. Japanese maples of course you can't go wrong in the shade and of course Japanese anemones they love the shade that's uh, a pink one of some sort that's a sunny plant by accident that's a eupatorium which sort of you see the way it's going out towards the sun that of course shouldn't be there we have some hellebores and we have a very nice pulmonaria it's a great shade plant that's pulmonaria longifolia and I just st stuck this in a few weeks ago for contrast and I think it's very nice contrast uh, that's uh, uh, I was gonna say a psychocarpus a physocarpus not a psycho and what else have we got we have a background of laurel you see the laurel now that was a mistake I should have we all make mistakes gardening I should have used you you as much gives a much tighter, flatter uh, background. The problem with you is very slow, and I was being a bit lazy, so I put the laurel in. Laurel is more available and it's cheaper, but the, I think the you is a better, more neutral background to show off the plants. But anyway, we have laurel, we're stuck with laurel, and we're going to keep the laurel. 
And we'll just see what else we have. A bamboo cart. Another very nice. Another very nice hydrangea aspera. A really good one. Once again, shade. A little bit of shade. Big leaf like that. Wouldn't like a lot of wind. Now that's been looking good for the last three months. Very, very easy. We have very good still be called color flash and this is one that runs and it doesn't it forms lovely carpets once the pulmonary is there once again to give it a little bit of contrast and then the dwarf aruncus a nice cut leaf japanese maple and there's a plant that didn't work so I have, you have to show people when you go wrong show people when you go wrong because people think you're here, everything you do in the garden is perfect. We all make mistakes. That, you see that fair area there? That was um, some plants uh, that didn't work out. So what we'll do, I don't know. We'll, it's a, an opportunity for something else. But it's often stuff that you think is going to work doesn't work, as I said before. And you just have to keep going on. And now as we move out here towards the sun, you can see plants like that like a bit more sun. Japanese sand rose likes the sun and we go out to the sunnier areas out there but just have another last look here now we just mentioned a few more plants and it does seem uh, that Japan is uh, mentioned a lot there must be a lot of shade in Japan we have a uh, Fatsia japonica which of course means the Fatsia that comes from Japan that's believe it or not a member of the ivy family that has a very large leaf and it's, it'll go well by the sea, but I think it's better in shade. In shade, the leaf, once again, the leaf gets bigger and it's a much nicer plant. Now, if you have an over, just to, just to tell you, if you have an overgrown one of these in your garden, you can whack it down in the spring and it will regrow. Don't be afraid. You can go right in and take large chunks out and it will, don't be afraid of it. But don't take little bits. It's a plant that if you, if you want to, uh, to get it, if it gets out of hand, you can, you can go really hard on it and it, it will re recover very quickly. And here we have another great another great plant regersius now regersius if you have heavy clay soil you cannot get a better plant in shade than regersia they love the heavy clay soil and two more japanese plants we have um we have this lovely mahonia spiky mahonia mahonias are better off in shade and better off out of the wind they just the leaves just look better you often see them planted in full sun and in in open situations and they always look a bit tatty in the shade they are always pristine and finally my favorite japanese anemone the white japanese anemone and the white one uh, i think it's whirlwind it's an american uh, variety uh, once again from the far east but look how well that shows up against the darkness that is plan is hard to beat okay that's it for shady plants